Robert Wagner uh, was born into a political family. Uh, his father, of course, was one of the great uh, legislators of the New Deal at the national level. I think he was shaped by his father. His father really was arguably the most famous liberal senator in American history. He was in some ways born to be a political leader. Now, he wasn't the sort of, um, uh, sort of public uh, leader that LaGuardia had been in the 30s and 40s. He was much more of a sort of behind the scenes uh, you know, broker, uh, in some ways the quintessential pluralist mayor. Um, that was his political style. He was in some ways the outlier among successful 20th century mayors who you think of as being big public personalities like LaGuardia, like Lindsay, like Koch, like Giuliani. Wagner was more of a behind the scenes type, uh, but it was a political style that worked for him. Robert Wagner was, you might say, the mayor of stability. He came into New York at a critical point when things were still okay. He didn't really have to deal with a lot of crises. New York was still stable, but it was the, also the turning point. New York started becoming the deindustrialized city in the 1950s. So that was Wagner's inheritance of what was going to happen to New York once it wasn't the, any longer the greatest industrial city in the world. Memories of Wagner are inflected by the city's unease with this mid-century moment. You know, this is the period of suburbanization in America. It's the period where the West Coast is becoming sort of culturally uh, ascendant in some ways. You know, who wants to be remembered as the mayor who lost the Dodgers to Los Angeles and lost Penn Station to the wrecking ball? That's who Wagner, that's, uh, Wagner is of that moment. Um, and I think one of the reasons we don't think of him that much is because this is a period in the city's history we'd rather forget. Well, Wagner oversaw an awful lot of important developments. Uh, the extension of uh, collective bargaining rights to municipal employees. Um, that's Wagner. Um, Lincoln Center, that's Wagner. Um, Shakespeare in the Park. Uh, Mitchell Lama housing, I can't remember when the program started, but there's a large expansion of uh, middle class housing uh, in the city. Public housing. When we look around us now in New York City and you see the largest number of public housing units in the United States. So that's a huge, I mean, those buildings which are derided by some people is ugly. And you notice they're only successful in New York. They've blown public housing, high-rise public housing up in Boston and Chicago and St. Louis and Newark and all other cities. Not in New York City. As far as I know, there's not one single vacant apartment and waiting list, 100,000 people to get in. Um, there are a lot of reasons why public housing in New York City is a success, whereas it failed everywhere else in the country. But I think Robert Wagner gets some credit for the fact that it was on his watch that they built it. Wagner in a lot of ways oversees the extension of this sort of New Deal uh, public goods and services, public investment state that had been created during the, uh, during the 30s uh, by FDR and LaGuardia. Um, Wagner extends that. So we get this sort of uh, uh, you know, long New Deal in one city under Wagner. I don't think he quite ever lived up to his father. But so what? I mean, his father was a titan, and uh, he did pretty well for himself. 